Hello everyone, welcome to today's lesson on recapping cumin delayed frequency. Okay, so I'm just going to get straight into what we need to do. So here's today's starter. So press pause, uh, have a go at the questions and then press play when you're ready to see the answers, please. Okay, welcome back. So here are the answers then for the starter question. So for question one, it's a right angle triangle. We know two lengths. Okay, we need to find a missing third length. We don't know any other angles, so it must be Pythagoras. Okay, and then because X is opposite the right angle, it's the hypotenuse, so it's the longest side, which is why I've added these two under the root here. And then answer a 23.4 to one decimal place. And if we double check that, it does make sense in terms of the question because this is opposite the right angle, isn't it? It's the hypotenuse. 23.4 is longer than these two. Okay, right, question two then. So this one now is a right angle triangle again, all right, but we know another angle. So as soon as we know another angle in the question, that indicates it is trigonometry rather than Pythagoras, okay? So I've only labeled the two sides here um, that we're using. Okay, I haven't I haven't labeled the adjacent down the bottom here. So we're using O and H together, which is sine, and I'm just plugging the numbers in then, and I've got Y equals um, 11 meters to one decimal place at the bottom there then. Then for question three, trigonometry again, okay, so it's another right angle triangle, but this time we're trying to figure out a missing angle, so there's another angle involved other than the right angle, okay. Again, I've only labelled the two sides that we're using, which is O and A, that gives us tan, and then remember when we're finding a missing angle, we always have to do um, tan to the minus one, or whatever function we're doing to the minus one, okay, so I've got 67.2 there for that one. So straight into the examples then. Okay, so here is um, example number one. So we've got the cumulative frequency diagram there, look, and then there's some questions to go down the side. So it's quite difficult to do this over a video, all right, and it's quite difficult sometimes to draw the lines. So what I've done is I've just pre-prepared the lines on the next slide, okay? So the question is asking here in part A, look, it says calculate the median and the interquartile range of the times. Okay, so we need to remember that the median is the middle value. Okay, so that's at 50%. So if I gave you a list of numbers and said find the median, you would put those numbers in order and you would find the middle value. Okay, so you'll note this that I've already drawn on the diagram here. Look, so the median is 9.5. So I'm just going to write that over there. Okay, um, and that's in seconds. So just to talk you through that, all right, the, the median 50%. This is where I've drawn the line here, like a 200, because the cumulative frequency, so the total frequency is 400. Obviously, half of 400 is 200. Okay, so I've just drawn a line straight across from 200 until we reach the curve, and then a line straight down. And you just got to be careful with the scale. All right, so the reason this one is 9.5 is if you have a look here, look, in between 5 and 10, we've got 20 little squares, and there's a gap of 5. All right, so if you do 5 divided by 20, you get 0 0.25 or 1 quarter. So that tells you that every little square is worth 1 quarter, okay? So another way to do that would be every two, every two little squares is worth 0 0.5 or every every four little squares is worth 1 whole. But you've got to make sure that you figure out that scale before you try and answer it, okay? So this is two little squares away from 10. And two little squares is worth 0 0.5, isn't it? So I've just taken 0 0.5 away from 10, giving my answer of 9.5. Okay. Right, the interquartile range, we need to remember this. So if I said find the range of data, it's the biggest, take away the smallest. So the interquartile range is the biggest quarter, so the upper quartile, take away the lowest quarter, so the lower quartile. Okay. And if the median is 50%, all right, the lower quartile is half of that amount. So that's 25%. And the upper quartile is adding those amounts together. So that's 75%. Okay. So I've already drawn them on the diagrams here. Look, so the upper quartile, if the median was at 200, the upper quartile is at 300, isn't it? Because it's in between this top half. And if the median is at 200, the lower quartile is at 100 because it's in between this bottom half. All right, so using the scale properly again, look, draw a line over from 100 and then down, I got 6.75. Draw a line over and down from 300, I got 13.25. So my interquartile range now is 13.25, take away 6.75. Okay, and if you need to um, 
either use a calculator, obviously if it's on the calculator paper, or if you need to use the column method to subtract there, then that's completely fine. So I've got an interquartile range in this question of 6.5 seconds. Okay. Right, moving on then. Question B says, how many people took less than five seconds to unwrap the box? So our time is along the bottom in there. I've already drawn the line. We just find five seconds. So I've drawn a line up from five seconds and then across. Okay, and then the scale at the side obviously is different this time. So that gives me a value of 75, um, 75 people. Okay, because going up the side there, um, I've just done it in, in quarters, look. So if that's 100, then that must be 50, mustn't it? So in between again must be 75. So every um, every five squares is worth 25 today. Or every one little square is worth five, however you want to do it. Then for part C, it says, how many people took more than 10 seconds to unwrap the box? So I've found 10 seconds here. I've drawn my line up and my line across, and that gives me a value of 225, okay? But this question says how many people took more than 10 seconds. This 225 is telling me how many people took up to 10 seconds. All right. So what we need to do for this one is anyone who took more than 10 seconds would be in between these two values, wouldn't it? So all we've got to do for this one is do 400 minus the 225. OK, and then that gives us um, the amount of people that took more than 10 seconds. So that should be 175 people. Okay, so that's just summing up how we add that. And the majority of these types of questions will always ask you to do the median, the interquartile range, and then something else to go with it. Okay, so either more than or less than. Um, sometimes they might be in between as well, which we'll look at on the next example. So just make sure that you've got that information and you understand. Um, obviously, you can pause the video and go back at any time. So question number two then, or example number two. So I'm going to show you this is um, this question now. All right. So again, we're asked to find the median and interquartile range, and then we've got to figure out this question as well. So I've pre-drawn the lines on this side. Okay. So for the median and interquartile range, we're doing it in the same way as before. So the median is the middle value. So at 50%. So this time it's out of 100. So 50% is going to be at 50, isn't it? So this is my middle value here at 50 so i've just gone across and down the scale along the bottom is easier this time look every one square is worth one and the scale up the side every one little square is worth two okay so i've got a median of 25 this is talking about seconds again so same as before then in the quartile range is the upper quartile take away the lower quartile so if the median is at 50 the lower quartile is in between uh, 0 and 50, isn't it? So half of 50, which is 25. So because each little square is worth 2, I've had to go up 2.5 squares here, look, because that would be 22, 24, and then halfway would be 5, all right? So I've got a lower quartile of 18. The upper quartile, then, is the upper half, so in between 50 and 100, which is 75. And again, I've had to go in the middle of some squares there, but I've got 29 as my upper quartile, okay? So my interquartile range now is just taking those two, um, taking those two numbers away from each other, which gives me 11, okay? So it's an interquartile range of 11 seconds. For question B then, all right, how many people took between 20 seconds and 35 seconds to leave the plane? So this is talking about in between these two values now. So what I've done on, the diagram is I've drawn a line up where 20 seconds would be in green here look and that's 30 30 passengers then I've drawn a line up from 30 five seconds right let me just quickly change that because that is clearly in the wrong um, it's in the wrong place isn't it so this needs to be at 35 which is there so let me just extend that which means that one needs to move up as well. Okay, that's better. So rather than it being 80, it should actually be 90, shouldn't it? Okay, so I've just drawn there 20 seconds 
for the for the one line okay which was 30 people and then for 35 seconds it was 90 people so because we're talking about in between those two now all we're going to do is just take them away from each other so we just have to figure out how many people are in between those two okay which is easy to work out in there so 90 take away 30 equals 60 so we say 60 passengers okay so that's how we would answer those questions so for the main task now um try your best um whatever way you can to answer these questions and then come back press play when you're ready for the answer so these are the two that i wanted to try and have a go at okay so press pause have a go press play when you're ready for the answers please Okay, just looking at the answers then. So these are the lines that you should have drawn for the first one and then therefore the um, the answers as well on this side. So press pause and just drop those down if you need to. Press play when you're ready for the next one. Okay, and then this is the same thing now. Look for question two. So all of the lines that you needed along with your um, answers over on this side as well. So again, press pause, drop those down. Press play when you're ready, please. Okay, on to the checking question then. So the checking question now is here. So you might want to press pause and have a bit of a read of this information first of all. All right. So this is now talking about a box plot. Okay, so we need to remember that when we're drawing a box plot, okay, it's going to look something like this. Excuse my drawing. And we need to remember this is the minimum value. Okay, this is the maximum value. This is the lower quartile, so the start of the box, the end of the box is the upper quartile, and the line in between is the median, okay? But the median is not always gonna be smack bang in the middle of that box, okay? The distance then, or the width of the box, is always the interquartile range. But let's have a look what we can do here. It says, uh, last Thursday, 80 people answered our survey on how many minutes they spent watching television. We now know the median time was 310 minutes. So straight away, we can find 310 on here okay if we check the scale going across 310 each little square is worth 10 in there so 310 would be here somewhere okay actually let me rub that out it's much better if i actually draw the lines instead um just to make it more clear because i don't confuse you so 310 we're saying is there okay so that's going to be our median then it says the lower quartile was 200, so we can draw another line now for 200, no problem. Then the upper quartile was 560, so let's find 560, that would be there. Draw our line up, okay. Then it says the person who watched the least television spent 50 minutes. So that indicates that the minimum was 50, because that's the person that spent the least amount of time, so 50 would be there. And it says the person who watched the most television spent 800 minutes. So that means the maximum value would be here at 800. Okay, and then we can complete the diagram then by joining the box up. And then doing our whiskers either end. Okay, obviously in class, this would be much easier because you'll just be drawing these lines with a ruler. Okay, so that is what our diagram will look like. Let me just change the color of those lines in the hope that we can see them a little bit better. Um, good one okay i think that's a little bit better so that is our um box plot anyway to illustrate that information okay so not the easiest um video to follow like not the easiest topic to follow via a video but um i hope you find that um helpful thanks for watching and i'll see you guys soon